Hello, George Hepworth here, Grover Park Consulting. Let's build Mike's mobile library. In this session, we're going to link together all of the controls in the menu so that they function as a group. This isn't a true responsive layout that you would get in a web page, but it, it does allow us to make the task of keeping our controls lined up and spaced and, and the width and height of all of our controls on the on the screen, consistent and dependable. I'm going to do that using the technique that I illustrated in a previous video, where we offset the X and Y coordinates. The X coordinate indicates how far from the left edge of the screen that control will be. So it's from the left edge of the screen to the left edge of the control, or in the case of this label, from the left edge of the screen to the left edge of this label. The Y coordinate is the distance down from the top. So the Y distance or the Y coordinate for this label will be the distance between the top edge of the screen and the top edge of that label. By keying everything off of our selected labels and instead of using hard coded values for X, Y, width, and height, we can make our layout move in sync. Let's do that by picking the label that we're going to key off for width and height and placement in our menu items. You can see that I've highlighted publications to creators or publications linking to creators. It is the largest amount of text in that label. Uh, the distance between the P in publications and the final S in creators is about the largest distance of, or the largest length, I should say, of any of our labels. So that's the one we'll key off. It has a slight amount of space at the beginning and at the end, and that's about right. This text is aligned in the center. The font size is 15 points. The height is 36, and the width, sorry, is 260. So it's 260 across, 36 up and down. It has five points of padding on the beginning and the end, in front of the P and after the S. And that is a decent looking appearance and we're going to key everything off that. We want all the other controls to maintain the same length as this master control. And again, it's master because it has the longest string of text in it. However, rather than hard coding each of those values, we're going to key the width of all of the other labels or buttons to it. I can, they are all set to 260, which is the hard coded value. But I can change that to button. publications creator dot width and now they are all the same width because all of these other labels or buttons are now tied to the width of the label or button with the widest string of the longest string of text they will all match that length regardless of how I change it. So for example, if I select this label and make it just a little bit wider, the others react in the same way. Now, that means that we have moved outside of our control panel. So I'm going to set this back to the 260. And you see the other labels respond to that change and they resize themselves accordingly. Our next step is to key or tie the width of the panel in which those labels are placed to the width of the labels. Let's look at the X position of the panel. It is 120. The X position of this label is 145. So we have 25 between the left edge of the panel and the left edge of our master label. 
We want to maintain that by making sure that the width of the panel is 25 on the left and 25 on the right wider than this label. We do that by setting the width of the panel to the width of the publication creator label or button plus 50. That gives us 25 on the left and 25 on the right. As long as we manage, we also set the X position of this label to the X position of our panel plus 25. So this is called Rec Menu Outline. We'll come back, select our label, and we'll say the X position is Rec Menu Outline dot x plus 25 plus 25. Now, with those coordinates, everything should continue to line up as we want. If I take this and drag it, it moves that one. So that means we have to coordinate the x position of the other labels as well. We select them all. And we can do this in two ways. We can set the X position for each of these other controls so that they tie or key off of the X position of the panel, or we can set them to key off the X position of this label. I believe that it's probably a good idea to key them all off the X position of the panel in which they fit. So we'll go to the X rec menu outline dot X plus 25. And now they're all lined up on the left. They're all going to move together as a group. If I grab the panel and move it, they move with it. If I increase the width of the master label, the other elements reorient themselves or resize themselves. And so now, instead of fussing about with dragging each of those items individually into place, I can count on their remaining consistent and in sync with one another, at least in the X and width dimensions. Our next step will be to take the same approach to the Y position. For the Y coordinates, let's start with the panel coordinate it in its Y position against the header. And then within that panel, we'll adjust the Y position and the height of each of the labels or buttons. Right now, the Y position is 109 below the top edge of the form. I'm going to say the Y position of the menu panel will be based on the height of the header. And the header is called Label Start Up App Title. So we'll come to this, we'll say Label Up Start Up App Title dot height plus 32. Let's see if I like that. I like that. That's okay. So now I'm going to say everything will be keyed from that point. Okay, we've got the panel lined up. The next step is to start placing our individual labels or buttons 
inside that panel. To do that, we'll coordinate the Y position of each of our labels in accordance with the Y position of the item or object above it. Right now, this one is set to 120, but I don't want to hard code it at 120. I want it to coordinate itself with the Y position of this panel. To do that, we just simply repeat the process we just completed. We're going to take the rec menu outline dot y and that places it against the top edge of the panel and we'll give it a space let's see what we think of 10. i don't like that i want it to be slightly larger let's make it 15. let's make it 20. i like that so it's going to be the y position of the panel plus 20. To place the next label, we're going to have to coordinate it with the publications label. To do that, we need the height of the publications label plus its Y position plus our spacer. So the Y for authors and creators is going to be the publications button Y plus publications button height plus 10. And as you can see, I've gone ahead and put these all in there so that I don't have to bore you stepping through here. Each of these buttons is now coordinated in its Y position with the item above it. Look at one more just to confirm that they are all working the same way. It's coordinated from the button above it the Y position of the button above it, plus the height of that button, plus 10. This one, there's a gap because we have two different groups of buttons. The top ones are the functions, the bottom ones are the maintenance, the lookup items, and the Y position is plus 72. Okay, we have looked now at this method of syncing the positions, the x and y coordinates in the width and height of each of our objects so that they function as a group. One last one I want to look at here, width of the header is set to the parent dot width, so it's always going to be the width of the parent. This icon is going to be set x and y to 0 and 0 so that it's in the upper left hand corner. This icon, which is our app icon, is set so that it is, its X position is the width of the icon in front of it. So they are cheek to cheek. We will follow the same approach throughout all our screens. I won't walk you through the setup of each one. I will just periodically remind you that that's what we're doing by looking at them. But uh, that should be enough to get you started on the path towards a pseudo-responsive layout, moving controls or coordinating the position or syncing the, the position uh, of controls one to another. As always, please hit the subscribe button to come back and see future installments. Hit the like button if you like what you've seen so far. And as always, leave any comments about this particular presentation or things that you would like to see in addition to what we've shown you here. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.